We, with the freedoms and relative economic prosperity of the Western world, have found increasingly frivolous ways to spend our money. Alongside this, there has been an increase in the availability of novelty away days, events, and all manner of foolish endeavours. I have certain friends who enjoy murder mysteries and escape rooms, even friends who steal from the latter. There are historical reenactment groups, indoor skydiving, supercar experiences, even zombie apocalypse experiences. So we live in a world where if you can imagine it, you can probably do it. With this in mind, one such activity I am aware of is human ten pin bowling. And this comes in two forms. One being zorbing with a twist where the human ball is aimed at giant pins. And the other is human pins, often in comedy sumo suits, being aimed at with a comedically oversized ball. All good clean fun. But where this bowling at human pins is all done in fun and good times, one particular bad apple in a town on the Wales-England border clearly didn't get the memo when he deliberately drove his gold Volvo into a group of pedestrians in October of 2022. These are the inexplicable actions of Stephen McHugh and the resulting death of 22-year-old Rebecca Steer. And this is Murder of Crows. One of the quirks of the UK that always seems weird to us Welsh is that the England-Wales border is, well, fairly irregular in places. Unlike the US where borders tend to follow largely straight lines, it would be fair to say that the border between England and God's own country is a little more erratic. Now if we focus on one of the more crenulated parts of the border, we find a picturesque Welsh village whose nearest main town is in England. This is just another of the little things that we can attribute to a long and turbulent history. In day-to-day -day life these little quirks make absolutely no difference. The area around Oswestry is beautiful and one of the small villages dotted around it was called Llana Manech. Yeah, try and find another YouTuber who could say that properly. It was in the village of Llanamanech 
that the Steer family lived. David and Jenny Steer had three children, a son called Corey and two girls called Rebecca and Kimberly. Rebecca was known to friends and family simply as Becca and was described as a very protective big sister. Now when she was younger Becca had dreams of making it in the entertainment world and actually travelled to Turkey with the aim of making it happen. But then she changed her mind markedly. She made the significant choice to attend Liverpool John Moores University to study criminal justice with the long term aim of becoming a detective. And it seemed that this was definitely in keeping with the pro-social young lady that she was. By 2022 she was entering the final year of her studies and she was doing extremely well and was expected to graduate with no issues. Now in October of 2022, the academic year was just starting at John Moores University and Becca was spending time with her family in Llanna Manech before knuckling down to her studies. She went for a night out with her friends in nearby Oswestry like many other youngsters from the outlying villages who were looking for more than village life could offer. Like many people she wanted a fast food fix at the end of a night of drinking. I have to admit I'm not immune to the tantalising lure of a kebab when I've had a drink or two. So it was this quest for a late night feast that took her to the grill out takeaway in the early hours of October the 9th 2022. So far so normal but then everything changed in an instant. But before we dive into the event that ultimately changed lives, we need to look at the cockwomble on the other side of this devastating juncture. That means we need to look at a 28 year old from the outskirts of Oswestry, named Stephen McHugh. It would be fair to say that McHugh was a man with a dubious past. This particular shit biscuit was originally from Liverpool and it was there in May of 2020 that he was sentenced to two years and three months in prison for possession of a shotgun as well as supplying class A and B drugs. Now prior to this he had six previous convictions for ten offences including possession of cocaine with intent to supply in 2012 when he was only 17. But the 2020 offence or more specifically the incident that led to his imprisonment is worthy of further analysis since it was a legal loophole that meant he received a shorter prison sentence 
and in turn meant he was free to be in Oswestry on the night of October the 8th into the early hours of October the 9th, 2022. So the events that led to his 2020 conviction began in September of 2019. On the evening of September the 3rd, police began chasing a suspected stolen car, a Volkswagen Golf, in the Tower Hill area of Kirkby. After a high-speed chase, the vehicle eventually crashed into a parked vehicle on Rainbow Drive in Melling. Two men decamped from the Gulf and disappeared into the night. But inside the car, police found a stash of weapons, including a sawn off shotgun, a long barrel shotgun, and ammunition. After forensic testing, DNA on the sawn off shotgun was matched to Stephen McHugh. Now McHugh, well, uh, he was 25 at this point. He was arrested and interviewed where he gave no comment responses to all questions. But the DNA evidence effectively fucked him. So the case went to court where other evidence of his drug dealing activities was also presented. It is important to note at this point that sawn off shotguns on account of the modification to make them more dangerous are prohibited weapons in the UK and are illegal even if the person using it has a legal firearms license. The mandatory sentence for having a sawn off shotgun begins at a minimum of five years. But, and like Kim Kardashian, it's a big but, McHugh's legal team argued that while the sawn off shotgun carried McHugh's DNA, it could not be proven that he had handled the weapon after its illegal shortening. Now, you and I both know that this argument deserves an A plus in shithousery. But the bottom line is that it was true. It could not be proven that McHugh had handled it after it had been shortened. As a result, he could only be convicted of possession of a firearm without a legal license. And this does not carry a mandatory minimum sentence and the total sentence imposed for the firearm and drug charges was two years and three months. As a result, he was free to be in Oswestry in 2022. But he had clearly learned nothing about steering clear of criminal activity during his periods in prison, as we will learn regarding his drug use later. On Saturday the 8th of October 2022, Stephen McHugh had watched a football match and then gone to the Unicorn pub for drinks with friends. After what turned out to be a lengthy drinking session, McHugh and his friends briefly attended Gibson's nightclub. It's worth noting that the 
gold Volvo that will become very important later in our story was parked at the Unicorn pub. Now McHugh was with his friend Alex Coulson for much of the day and at the end of the night McHugh and Coulson ended up in an altercation with two guys called Thomas Jones and Hayden Lloyd. McHugh, Coulson and some other friends assaulted Thomas and threatened Lloyd in what seemed to be a case of mistaken identity as McHugh believed they were part of a group that had caused him problems the previous weekend. At this point McHugh and Coulson returned to the Unicorn pub to collect the gold Volvo and from there head back towards Oswest Street Town Centre with Stephen McHugh driving, picking up uh, another man on route. At this point it's important to note that McHugh was driving the Volvo despite not actually having a driving license and having drunk, brace yourselves, six beers ten double shots of spirits along with snorting eight lines of cocaine in the lead up to what I'm going to describe. Because it's at this point that the Becker Steer and Cockwomble McHugh threads of our story will very literally collide. The first stage of the events that followed was McHugh driving the gold Volvo on Willow Street in Oswestry. Street. As the Volvo was passing a takeaway called Grill Out, apparently McHugh saw something or someone, perhaps among the group of people that had congregated outside the takeaway, that made him explosively angry and he stopped the car in the street and could not be calmed down. He then reversed the car a short distance before driving forward, mounting the pavement and hitting the group outside Grill Out. The Volvo did not just hit Becker Steer, it drove over her. The car then apparently sped up and left, leaving a scene of carnage in its wake. Becker Steer was killed having suffered catastrophic injuries while two other people were injured. 
Stephen McHugh was tracked down to a property in Gobowen, Shropshire, and was, unsurprisingly, verbally belligerent during his arrest, where his main concern seemed to be to try to find out who had grassed him up. His trial took place at Stafford Crown Court and lasted for seven days. Stephen McHugh, who as we know had also taken cocaine and did not hold a driving licence, was convicted on May the 4th, 2023. The court heard how McHugh mounted the curb and ploughed into a group of pedestrians on a pavement outside the grill out takeaway. As well as hitting Becca Steer, he also struck and injured two men who were knocked aside by the car's front wing. McHugh snorted cocaine less than five minutes before driving into the crowd of people. After eight and a half hours of jury deliberations, he was found guilty of murder by the jury of six women and six men by an 11 to one majority. Who the hell was the one? Anywho. Passing sentence, Mr Justice Andrew Baker said McHugh had treated pedestrians like they were human skittles. Describing the murder as an outrage, Justice Baker said the incident could, could have been much worse for the group who had been standing on the footpath but went on to say, for Becky Steer, as everyone in court knows, it could not have been worse. McHugh had admitted having almost no driving experience and had never had a driving lesson. He had also admitted drinking and taking drugs before he got behind the wheel. He had previously claimed in the court that he had been trying to frighten a group of people outside the takeaway in Willow Street, but had denied using his car as a weapon to deliberately drive into pedestrians. The court had heard how Becker, who wanted to become a police detective, was in her final year of a criminal justice course at Liverpool John Moores University. In a victim impact statement, Becker's mother described her daughter as the most loving, talented, and kind-hearted person who you could have wished to know. Stephen McHugh was sentenced to a minimum of 18 years. The judge also ordered the destruction of McHugh's automatic transmission Volvo which he had acquired after trading in a manual transmission Volkswagen Passat eight days before the incident. West Mercia Police Detective Chief Inspector Mark Bellamy who was the SIO or Senior Investigating Officer was in court with his team every day and he said at the end of the proceedings this was a horrendous attack which tragically robbed an innocent young woman of her life 
while she was enjoying a night out with friends. I'm pleased that justice has been done today for Rebecca and my thoughts remain with her family. I pay tribute to the dignified way that they have conducted themselves throughout the trial, displaying venerable strength and resilience in listening to the contemptible and narcissistic behaviour of McHugh, who continually lied throughout the trial in a desperate attempt to escape justice. I am grateful that the jury saw through his web of lies and convicted him on the evidence presented to them. This was an incredibly unusual attack, particularly for a small place like Oswestry, and understandably it shook the town to the core. I'd like to thank the community for their support during this investigation, which has been invaluable in securing today's verdict. I'd also like to thank my team who worked tirelessly on this case to ensure we were able to deliver justice for Rebecca. And that was the devastating case of Becca Steer, who was the victim of a pissed up stoned cockwomble having a tantrum that had fatal consequences. Becca wanted to be a detective and was destined to be a force for good in the world. She was beautiful, generous, kind and sweet and was cruelly robbed of a future with unlimited potential. This video is of course dedicated to her and I, and I send heartfelt condolences to her friends and family. Thank you for watching another episode of Murder of Crows. I'm Steve. This lap paperweight is Samson. And we will see you when we see you. Mm -hmm.